we are going to quickly do an analysis whether we are in a tech bubble and uh, this is helpful for the uh, Bloomberg exam or any other interview that you go through. We are looking at the new term which is defined which is unicorn series ABC funding the pre money and the post money valuation at the end of this video and look at the e-commerce bubble. So quickly moving ahead the first thing that we need to understand before we dive into this question what are unicorn? So it's a new term introduced this year, most probably, and uh, it it means uh, it means uh, uh, that uh, a company which is valued uh, in excess of one billion is a kind of a unicorn. It's it's used in the venture capitalist industry. So let's look at some of the graphs quickly, and this is from TechCrunch.com, and it says that new admissions to the unicorn each year. You see a lot of private equity companies are crossing the 1 billion mark it was just 5 or 10 in 2013 and just look what happened in 2014 all of them crossed the mark so it's like a 5 times high just look at what happened half the year it's, it should go again uh, very up uh, at the end of 2015 and that makes us ask the question that are we in a tech bubble that we are denying another chart from the techcrunch.com it's, uh, uh, it's about the series uh, a b c d e funding and you see a lot of valuation on series e funding has gone up so people are uh, doing a lot of pre-money valuation their assumptions uh, are really um, unrealistic who's going to get affected by this bubble before we delve in uh, more to the news articles so the pension fund and the insurance companies go to the venture capital companies and invest there because they are really not getting anything into the fixed income market so what would happen after this bubble uh, pension fund and uh, the insurance companies would take some hit uh, the price would correct the uh, the people who manage private equity funds would would see a correction and there would be a slight effect on the healthcare uh, insurance companies because uh, the premiums would go a little up of the pension and the healthcare insurance because uh, they now know that they lost a huge money which they invested in uh, the private equity so uh, the assumptions are that uh, 10 to 15 percent money of uh, these uh, uh, insurance co insurance companies are uh, and pension funds are invested in the private equity so this is uh, from uh, the street.com where the unicorns that bubble might burst now we're going to look at some of the news in the last two months uh, and analyze what's uh, going on so we just had an introduction about what unicorn is now this bubble is uh, something that all the journalists uh, can just stop asking says uh, fortune.com he says that uh, uh, people in the reporting industry or the journalists are like uh, uh, obsessed and they are asking this question again and again and is it a tech bubble is this over value this is going to crash it's like uh, people liking the doomsday scenario and praying that it happens someday so this is uh, a nice way to look at that so uh, in all these uh, uh, meetings or conferences there is this question that everybody asked for the tech bubble industry that is this a bubble or is this not so there is a list of unicorn on uh, fortune.com and I would like to start with the biggest one so the biggest one and the one that's 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 make that, that also made me crazy was uber because i did a very 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 economic and free rides in the city of new delhi so i i, I rode a lot of uber cab it should be over a hundred or 200 rides in the month of uh, i guess from april to july somewhere that time and it's a really nice thing the next is the phone that i used yomi it's again funded by a lot of private equity player it's not on to uh, the public domain yet somebody say airbnb plantier snapshot again one of my favorites flipkart where i do all the shopping in india spacex all of my files are uh, being synchronized to dropbox so it's it these are some crucial companies and these are the big uh, big companies that are not public yet and they are being still funded by the private equity bubble so it's the tech industry in denial but there is a tech bubble which is about to burst uh, 
and uh, this is the question everybody asks so uh, uh, it, it started with the unicorn season where they believe that there have been a lot of unicorn they say that there are 47 unicorns in 2014 as compared to 7 or 8 in 2012-13 there have been 32 in the first uh, just uh, six months or five months so that's amazing so uh, uh, they, they say that uh, the bubble is from the private equity investor and uh, uh, the valuation uh, um, have very optimistic uh, assumptions so that, that's what they talk about does it look like a bubble does it not look like a bubble was the euphoria and things like that some say that this bubble might burst in 2016 and uh, this is an article which says that uh, there was a time when some of the paintings used to be sold at a very high price and uh, people used to uh, uh, be amazed on how uh, uh, these paintings are sold at a very high price what's there in the painting it's just a painting but it's art so it were it were being sold and and that's how it became a lot of fun to look at that these articles a few of articles are very uh, new that it says that there are signs of a bubble uh, uh, Arista network which offered me share on the coming IPO and uh, uh, and he wrote about this company and uh, uh, fortunes unicorn list of private companies has grown since then um, this uh, Arista's price uh, nearly doubled from its listing price and uh, uh, things like that and just people are writing and writing and and some say it's a bubble some say it's not but it's it's very dangerous are we in a tech bubble uh, recent investors uh, value Uber at 50 billion and Airbnb at 25 it was before mutual pension fund became a leader player in the colossal uh, late stage funding round it's quite interesting that uh, they came a little late uh, onto this and uh, i define bubble as something where assets are prices that cannot be justified by any physical assumption says uh, j readers a professor of finance at university of florida morning Winston. and uh, uh, how do you know when the moment has arrived when the billion dollar unicorns as they are known among them begin to insist that uh, their ultra high growth should not be subject to conventional PE valuation it's uh, one thing so when the valuation has scrutinized the result can be called hubbly so he talks about that and uh, this is late venture what created two risky companies out of the public market the people who stand to get hurt are the business of getting hurt and just they keep talking and talking and some of the more news that uh that is coming in so tech market that's approaching level of uh it index and so on let me see if there is a very recent news i think it's at the last let's quickly go there then see what happened in the last week just look at that This is September 26 days ago. So bursting of tech bubble is it? It's is it a good thing? So the unicorns, uh, the ones that and the hedge fund want to make two years over the next five years, will so have to epic uh, boom in tech M I P O. The problem is that most liquidity is public market. Consider I P O actually plunged to seven year lows compared to box and I P O posted with return for Wall wants a balance of good profitability, not any cost. The winner buzz that many implosions in unicorn term unicorpuses, but the huge amount of investment will still be far off. Rather, I expect to see a lot of uni zombies, which are companies stalled, cannot raise more capital. They have improved good technology, sold to BlackBerry, the form of unicorns, 13 rounds of funding. So, but no, let's face it, I can major boom bust cycle and so on. Is there some fun into that? This is again of September 8. The venture capitalist argued the frontiness of private tech company valuation. One thing increasing certain uh, The last evidence comes from the initial data point uh, by Renaissance Capital, the managing of IPO exchange fund as well as long term illicit market. According to us, 15 companies in the tech have gone public this year and just uh, six more in the wing uh, uh, pace 2014. So, out of 15 companies have gone phone for the average total return have been negative. Both figures uh, are far cry from the depth of uh, tech driven company. Recent market will ultimate tech companies uh, less likely to go public. Overall, IP market has seen 135 deals with total 200 year 
one third drop from the last uh, year at this time so if they are not able to go public it means um, uh, there is the realization that uh, the pricing is uh, not right so uh, a few more bad IPOs uh, a check uh, or an increase in interest rate would uh, uh, just caused uh, cause them to uh, go down a few other tech companies have reported uh, file confirmation of mobile payment so uh, VC argues uh, should not be debated and so on so uh, is there something else that you would like to look at what could burst it it's, it's an interesting thing uh, this article is of September 1 so uh, uh, they are not uh, using P by E ratio we are going to have a correction one of these days uh, arguing we are not in a bubble it's not as bad as 1999 he says uh, sold uh, broadcast.com uh, 5.7 billion a few years ago the biggest loser will be anyone who borrowed money to invest in private companies uh, uh, certainly way to observe this through the architecture uh, san francisco city has done about half of its on track to increase the office space by 15 percent uh, a spaceship designed by which uh, spans 2.8 million square uh, some of these buildings have the money obtained partial by uh, bubble gotten gains so the market will continue to rise and uh, uh, and high tech workers uh, pay up and down reported to paid nearly 196k on an average and 7 million in the stock other program have their own agents and this is what I was uh, looking at and I was amazed at the very high salaries at Amazon and Walmart elabs uh, the fresher salaries are like um, uh, 200,000, 300,000 and, and that's quite amazing and uh, the, the people I saw who get out from uh, who are just uh, graduating from their masters anywhere they are at least earning 200k in Amazon and the e-commerce industry and that's again a sign that how uh, wanted they are and uh, Airbnb so that was all uh, our news and my views. You can uh, check more uh, about this topic. Look at the question of uh, private equity that you can get in a better exam and a case study that you can probably get for the exam. A private equity fund seeks to uh, add value uh, and they are the funds uh, which are private and not public so they are not listed on the stock market. In the private equity world, uh, the private equity funds are able to optimize the structure, the management and uh, foster innovation in a much more flexible way compared to the public uh, equity world. So it's an alternative system of uh, governance and ownership and control and innovation where uh, the fundamental source of money is the private equity funds and not the public and they exist uh, in, in such a way. So we have the term called uh, general partner. So the role of a general partner is the valuation of potential investment, but these investments are privately owned. So valuation encounters a challenge and this is the to topic of uh, today that are the real estate, uh, are the e-commerce this time. Earlier it was real estate or value. Now valuation differs and there are various ways to value them. So early stage uh, valuation is very different from a late stage valuation. And there are various techniques that they use. So in a private equity fund, they have an incentive to acquire add value and exit. Exit is the right time word because if you don't exit and the business goes burst or whatever happens, you lose all the money. So planning the route of exit is very important. Exit in terms of some big company acquiring your startup or small company or uh, you go to the uh, IPO and uh, make an exit and sell the company to the public. So the exit is an important thing. So the two important measures that uh, we use in private equity are IRR which is internal rate of return and multiple. Comparison of observed returns from private equity across funds with other assets, the timing of cash flow, the difference in risk, uh, uh, portfolio composition and vintage failure effects uh, are important. So there are few things. When uh, a company uh, starts and you have a terminal value, you have the time to exit, you have the amount of investment and you have a discount rate and you have 
uh, a number of shares which is owned by the entrepreneur who has generated the idea. So the first step uh, for us becomes see and post money, money valuation. So let's look at step one which is a kind of uh, post money valuation. So only after positive cash flow in the model occurs at the time of exit which is typically an IC or a reason why because of me like Google acquired some small, small startups and they bought off and uh, they borrowed from the founder. So where the major of the terminal where the company is denoted uh, by V or whatever and for example here in in, uh, in Israel they have uh, and on uh, uh, on online map system with Google board, I forgot its rules or something like that in a billion or so. So that's the terminal value. So the venture capital firm try to find out the post money valuation, which is the terminal value, and they discount that with a very high discount rate because it's a risky proposition. So they want a high return. We don't know the risk yet, but yeah, we know that we want a very high return. So they discount it by a very high discount rate to bring it to the and then by discounting them, we get the three money valuation. What does this business mean today? For three money valuation. And then we look at the ownership fraction. So suppose a business of a billion, uh, and uh, a billion you plan to exit in five years and you discount it by a very high discount rate, something like an 80% or 100%, um, or a 40% and you get that it should be like 200 million or whatever. And then you can uh, uh, find out uh, your percent of what you would give. So uh, you'll take the ownership of the share. So the founders have some share, but they give a part of those share to uh, to the company. So then moving ahead, uh, uh, they again make the calculation of how much they own, how much they they don't own and uh, what uh, they do and then they obtain a price for it here. Now they might go for another funding where they can still dilute and, and get more funding and at that time you have to again value and look at uh, what the value of that company would be. So that goes on uh, with, the, uh, with the time period. And then you have another method which is the uh, uh, internal rate of uh, return. So those are the two methods to value the private experience.